Hello everyone, welcome back to Exploring Quantum Physics. I'm Charles Clark and we'll now start using some of the tools that we developed in the previous section to get the basic commutation relations for the angular momentum operators. Now once again I have to emphasize, and I've been there myself, uh, the only way to develop facility with these techniques is to actually practice them. So um, in the interest of time, I'm going to outline a number of the key um, things that have to be done to develop a working set of angular momentum tools. Um, but really, if you want to understand it, it's not going to do you good just to look at that. You will have to, um, to do some of the computations. And now, for some people, those, those sorts of calculations turn out to be enjoyable. Uh, others can't stand them. Uh, so you'll just you'll 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 get a sense of what it's like, and uh, some of you I think will will not only benefit from this but come to enjoy it and value it. At least hope so. Okay, so once again, here's the definition of the angular momentum operator. Uh, now I've break it down. So here's here's what we started with at the beginning of the first part. Here's the Einstein summation condition. Here's the Einstein summation condition with the levi civitas symbol. Now, by the way, uh, I here is the square root of minus one, and I try to avoid um, try to avoid using i as a running index when we have the square root of minus one present. So just keep your eyes out for that. But there's no no significance as to whether the symbols u v w a b c d e f. Anything that appears here is a running as a running index, and the the uh, particular choice of symbol that's used to represent it is just something arbitrary. Now, in fact, everything that's going to be done in this part is based on the the um, commutation relationship between position and momentum. Uh, but as you can see, when you have when you have products, then there's a, there's a a bit of uh, bookkeeping that's required to make sure that everything turns out right. So just to um, just to start with something very basic, let's try a simple application of this commutation relationship in the in video quiz. Okay, so I hope you're able to um, to, de to to derive this expression uh, from the uh, uncertainty principle. And we'll see, we'll see many examples like this later on. Okay, so here's, here's our basic definition again, just to, just to keep everything clear before you on the screen. Uh, here is the fundamental commutation relation that, on which everything else is based. Oh yes, now here is this, um, this identity that you just derived. So now, uh, here's a very important expression. What does the angular momentum, how do, what's the commutation relation of the angular momentum with, let's say, the position operator? Well, all right, that's, um, uh, here's the commutator LAXB. It's just very simple expressing what that means. And now uh, we, we, uh, we now decompose the angular momentum operator into its basic parts. It's, you know, R cross P. And then, um, uh, then we, um, uh, we, ha we, we apply this um, from, from this expression up here. We apply contraction and we get this uh, this is a very significant identity, which you will see is generic. In other words, if we have any vector-valued operator in here, like we get the same, we get the same identity for for the momentum. We get this commutator L A X B is I H bar epsilon A B C X C. I I rather like express I rather like ex writing expressing that in this way because it it emphasizes the the difference between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics. Do you see that um, uh, in classical mechanics, this expression would vanish identically because 
because a cross b is equal to minus b cross a for classical operators. So here we have like these two real observable operators. The, the, uh, the sum of these two cross products is an imaginary number times the vector. So this really is a, this is about as quantum as it gets. And indeed, note that in the limit h bar goes to zero, this produces the right answer in that you get back the same, the classical cross product. So there are, there are a number of identities that you'll see that look like this in quantum mechanics. So once again, where are we? Okay, we had, we had uh, we have here we have the, the basic relations, the one that you derived. So um, we're about to conclude here. I uh, strongly recommend that you, you verify the following things. So for example, here's uh, the, um, the analog, the identity we proved on the previous slide with x. We get the same type of thing for p. Now here's, and here's the, sort of the most important one. The commutator of the different components of angular momentum with themselves, uh, again, it, ha it is really of the same form uh, because L is a vector. So this, uh, this allows us to write another uh, amusingly quantum expression. The cross product of something with itself is an imaginary number times that thing. So this is truly a quantum identity. And then um, finally, so I'd say uh, these two are more or less the same thing, but this is this is of central importance. That any comp so any two components of the angular momentum operator in general do not com they in general they don't commute, but uh, any component of the square of the angular momentum operator so L squared I should have should have written this as like L K L K just so as not to confuse you, or L-A, L-A. Uh, so let me, let me just write this. L-A, L-B, L-B equals zero is the identity that um, you're being asked to verify. Uh, in other words, that any component of the angular momentum operator commutes with the, the square magnitude of the angular momentum operator. Okay, do take some time to work on those. I think you'll find it uh, rewarding.